Are we on? Are we live? Yep. Okay, I think we started 30 seconds late. I'm really sorry about that. It was four, four, four is when we're starting. Four, 44. Who knows why I do these things? Okay, so welcome. First, I'd like to introduce you to my friends that are over here. Okay? We've got them all here. Okay? I want you to take note. The short people are in front. The short animals. The tall animals are in the back. That way, everybody can see over each other's head. And of course, you know my personal favorite, the Triceratops. Yeah. And we brought some other guys, my pigs and, and, and these guys here from where the wild things are. And of course, my good friend, Max. Now that's Max up there in the Christmas tree. And that is correct. That is my Christmas tree. But we're going to talk about that in a few minutes. So first of all, I, I am just so excited that you're here today and um, it's just a great time right now. And it, it just really is. The sun is shining here where I am and I've got my wonderful camera woman back, my beautiful wife Margaret, and that makes me very happy. And um, it's just great to be out here in my favorite color, blue, okay? And my son Taylor made all this stuff for, for me. So um, the first thing, we read a story um, out of this book the other day, a poem. It's called The Butterfly Jar. And we're going to read another one. Now, I don't know about you, but I really like bananas, okay? Um, they're really good. And I have a great story about bananas. I'll save it for another day. But, you know, bananas are so awesome. And they make banana bread. You can make all kinds of things with bananas. Unfortunately, my youngest grandson, J.D., he doesn't really like bananas and he's only one years old we don't understand it like how can you not like bananas when you're one but this is called the banana king and here we go a king I knew got tired of salad cheese and meat and decided that bananas was the only food he'd eat just boiled bananas, baked bananas, scrambled bananas, fried, broiled banana burgers with banana juice on the side. Now the king so loved bananas that he made a royal decree. My subjects too shall only eat bananas just like me. Mashed bananas, pickled bananas, hot banana stew, banana soup and sandwiches, banana pizza too. So the king and all his subjects ate bananas, nothing more, till they ran out of bananas. And they went back to eating all the normal stuff they ate before, which was good. Because with so much banana eating, everybody was all sick to their stomachs anyway. Oh. The end. So that was called the Banana King. So why do I still have my Christmas tree? I know it's a great question. I'm so glad you asked because I love to garden, okay? And what I do is I save my Christmas tree and I cut off its branches. And I cut off its branches in the spring and I put these branches in, on top of the soil to act as mulch. And it makes your garden so much richer and so much more beautiful. So I'm just repurposing or reusing my Christmas tree and Max is, uh, is using my Christmas tree too. Besides, there might be even birds and stuff that like to use my Christmas tree. So hey, we had this amazing request for this book, this story. And I just want to highlight out that this is the party edition of this book. Okay? So the party edition. Are you, like, is this not crazy or what? The party edition of this book. And this story is called Too Many Daves. Okay? And we have a good friend, uh, my wife Margaret and I, um, Megan and Jason. And they fix our car, actually. They have an automotive repair place. And Megan, her grandchildren, for some reason, she calls them monsters. I don't really understand why. I'm sure they're lovable kids. I really do believe that. But, you know, Megan and Jason have become our friends. And she watched some of our story time. And she asked if we could read this story, Too Many Daves. Okay? So we're going to read Too Many Daves. Did I ever tell you that Mrs. McCabe had 23 sons, and she named them all Dave. Well, she did, and that wasn't a smart thing to do. You see, when she wants one, and she calls out, Yoo-hoo! 
come into the house, Dave. She doesn't get one. All 23 Daves of hers come on the run. This makes things quite difficult at the McCaves, as you can imagine with so many Daves, and often she wishes, wishes that when they were born, she had named one of them Bodkin Van Horn, and one of them Who's Foos, and one of them Snimmin, and one of them Hot Shot, and one of them Sunny Jim, and one of them Shadrack, and one of them Blinky, and one of them Stuffy, and one of them Stinky, woo! And one of them Stuffy, another one Putt Putt, another one Moon Face, another one Marvin O Gravel Balloon Face, and one of them Ziggy, and one Soggy Muff, one Buffalo Bill, and one Biffalo Buff, and one of them Sneepy, and one Weepy Weed, and one Paris Garters, and one Harris Tweed, and one of them Sir Michael Carmichael Zutt, and one of them Oliver Bulliver Butt, and one of them Zanzibar Buck Buck McFate, but she didn't do it. And now it's too late. The end. Too many Daves. Okay, hey. So, as I've gotten older, I always loved rocks and building blocks. Rocks and building blocks and Legos and all those fun things. And I've recently taken to stacking rocks. Now listen, this is, this is really tough and hard stuff. So, like, if you're bored and you want to learn how to do something new and exciting, this is what I'm going to tell you to do. Go out, get yourself some rocks, and just start stacking them up. It isn't easy. It isn't easy to stack these rocks up. They don't always cooperate. A lot of times they fall down. Oh boy, sometimes you have to change the rocks that you have. And if you don't change the rocks you have, sometimes they all end up on the ground but sometimes not wow that was pretty good I liked it hey so I want to say a special shout out to some people some friends uh, you know I, I know about you guys out there and so um, hopefully Cece is watching today and um, uh, oh Silas and Benny and there might be another Benny Bennett watching too and my neighbors Thomas and James they live right next door over here and um, Niall and Elliot might be watching and um, hmm then I got to tell you I got three little guys that are really special to me you all are special to me but I have Ethan and Andrew and JD and they're like my buddies and I really miss them right now and um, that's one reason we're doing story time so we've just got a few minutes left and we'll be done okay and I wanted to tell you about tug of war you know about tug of war you know about when you get the rope and you tug a war, you whoa, 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 you tug and you try to win at the war, the tug of war. Ugh. I've been in tug of wars. I've been in tug of wars where when I was done, I had nothing left. Everything was on the ground. I'd given everything I had to give. And sometimes I lost. But you know, I want to tell you about something that, that is really important to me. And it's really, it's, it's, it has to do with tug of war. And this is another story by Shel Silverstein, okay? And we read some of his stories the other day. And actually, I need a shout out. If anybody has the giving tree, apparently my copy is uh, gone. So I would love to do that story. It's one of the first story times I ever did. So this one by Shel Silverstein is called Hug of War, okay? Hug of War. And you know what? I'm going to tell you something. And this is in his book, um, Where the so Sidewalk Ends. We're all going to be hugging again one day. We really will be. And I look forward to that. So this is called Hug of War. I will not play it Tug of War. I'd rather play it Hug of War, where everyone hugs instead of tugs where everyone giggles and rolls on the rug, where everyone kisses and everyone grins and everyone cuddles and everyone wins. That's called Hug of War by Shel Silverstein. Hey, listen, you've hung out. It's about five minutes to five. I want to tell you about something really special. A good friend of mine, Sarah, Sarah O'Brien, is going live 
at five, okay? That's at the Facebook website, Community Rocks New Jersey. So it's Thanksgiving, Thankful Thursday. It's Thankful Thursday. And she's calling it Gimme Five Live at Five. Gimme Five Live at Five. Gimme Five Live at Five with Sarah. And her husband Josh will be there. Her son, her family's gonna be there. They're gonna be, she's playing, she's gonna play the guitar for you. She's gonna sing for you. Community Rocks New Jersey. The link is also on my timeline on Facebook if you can't find it. Or just type in Community Rocks New Jersey. Okay? And. All of these shows today are coming to you from New Jersey because we really like New Jersey. Hmm? The Garden State. The Garden State. Garden State. Christmas tree. Hey, I love you. Special shout out to my wife, Margaret, for filming this and actually smiling at me when I do this. It makes me feel so good. I love all of you. God bless you. Stay safe. Wash your hands. Be good, okay? If anybody needs anything, seriously, reach out to us. Reach out to your neighbors. People are more generous than you could ever imagine. These times, people are rising up right now. Look at what's going on in the world. It's, it's scary, but I'm going to tell you something. There's a lot of beautiful and wonderful things as people help each other. God bless you. I love you. Bye-bye.